Hello and welcome to Meeting Jesus with me, Wayne Clark. I'm the pastor at Trinity Baptist Church in Manchester, in Gorton, and it's uh, good to be with you today. And we had some problems with the sound and the vision yesterday, so I'm just checking that that's working. It does seem to be working. Hooray, hooray. Praise God, it's all coming through okay. I think if you want to put your comments on, uh, if you're watching on Facebook Live and you want to put your comments on down here, please do so, just so we know you're watching. And if something you want to say and share with us today, either on today's reading or on anything you'd like us to pray for, not too confidential, of course, then put them your comments down there on uh, on the Facebook so that we know um, that you're with us and that we can join with you and share your thoughts. Uh, this is a series of Bible studies leading up to Easter. It's a time to reflect and prepare in these days that we call Lent when we're looking at some passages from the Bible. We're looking at Luke's Gospel, particularly the journey that Jesus took towards Jerusalem and now into Jerusalem and now towards the cross as he uh, travels that journey, that journey that was the um, the way, walk of discipleship that he took following in obedience to his father's will towards the cross where he was to give his life as a sacrifice for the world uh, for the sin of you and me and that's what this Easter preparation is about and we are as it were going with Jesus and as Jesus went he met various people and we're looking at those encounters those people who met Jesus and we're praying that we also may meet with him so that's why we call this series meeting Jesus let's pray together as we begin let's pray father god we thank you that we have the opportunity of uh, being together now different places different parts of the world different circumstances but you are with us joining us together as one so as we look at your word the scriptures now we pray that you may speak to us that you may be with us that we may meet jesus and that in uh, these times together in the scripture that we read you may uh, speak your word into our hearts, into our lives, into our needs today uh, for blessing us and that we may bless others in Jesus' name. Amen. So all these passages we're looking at are in Luke's Gospel, in the now the final section of Luke's Gospel. On Tuesday we saw Jesus in the temple speaking to some temple leaders who were interrogating him, trying to catch him out. And today is a similar passage, a second set of interrogators come to him, but this raises different issues. Uh, today we're reading Luke chapter 20, but later on in Luke chapter 20 from verse 27 to verse 40. So the words are up here on the screen. Uh, follow with me or you may have your own Bible that you want to look at. We're going to read Luke 20, 27 to 40 and then think about the content uh, of these words. God's word says, Some of the Sadducees who say there is no resurrection came to Jesus with a question. Teacher, they said, Moses wrote for us that if a man's brother dies and leaves a wife but no children, the man must marry the widow and raise up offspring for his brother. Now, there were seven brothers. The first one married a woman and died childless. The second and then the third married her, and in the same way the seven died, leaving no children. Finally, the woman died too. Now then, at the resurrection, whose wife will she be, since the seven were married to her? Jesus replied, The people of this age marry and are given in marriage. But those who are considered worthy of taking part in the age to come and in the resurrection from the dead will neither marry nor be given in marriage. And they can no longer die. For they are like the angels. They are God's children, since they are children of the resurrection. But in the account of the burning bush, even Moses showed that the dead rise. For he calls the Lord, the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. <laughs> he is not the God of the dead, but of the living, for to him all are alive. Some of the teachers of the law responded, well said, teacher. And no one dared to ask him any more questions. 
This is God's word to us in Luke 20, 27 to 40. Our series is called Meeting Jesus, but these people and the people we saw on Tuesday aren't so much meeting Jesus as, well, confronting Jesus. Today, a group of Sadducees have a trick question to ask him. Sadducees were a Jewish group who were known for their love of the scriptures. They tended to be the rich and high born. Uh, they held high positions within the authorities of their time and they kept hold of those positions by working with and not against the Roman occupying forces and authorities. And they didn't believe that the dead would live beyond the grave. They denied the idea that some other Jews of that time had of a resurrection life after this life. So they'd heard Jesus speak of resurrection and they have a question for him, a killer question, as we might put it, one that they'd spent ages formulating to try and catch him out. Now, there's a law in the Old Testament that was actually hardly ever used in practice, but it's there. It's about a widow marrying her late husband's brother to keep the family name alive. What if this happened, they say? Well, what if it happens... Well, even seven times. What then, if there's an afterlife, they say? When they all died, she'd have seven husbands. <laughs> the way Jesus responds tells us a couple of things. It tells us something about life after death, interestingly. But it also tells us a lot about grace. And what we should do when we're faced with annoying people. First, he says this. Yes, there is life beyond this life. You've got it wrong. And those who are saying there is a resurrection are right. But it's not quite the way you're talking about it. The life beyond this life isn't the way you are understanding it. In the life to come, well, two things. First of all, there won't be marriage. I'm sure love will endure, but not pairing up and having children. That's the first thing he says. Second, he says, there will be no death in the life beyond this life, the resurrection life. Jesus says we will be like angels. Now, we mustn't get this wrong. He's not saying we will become angels. But he says, like angels, we will be eternal beings in resurrection bodies. Jesus says we will be children of the resurrection. He then goes on to say, if you think carefully about what he's saying here, what guarantees our eternal life with God? Which is the love of God which drives away death. Just as in God there is no sin, so in God there is no death. Eternal life, he says, is relationship with God. And that cannot be defeated by death. It lasts forever because God's love is eternal. Look at verse 38 where Jesus says of God, He is not the God of the dead, but of the living, for to him all are alive. And if people are alive to him, then they are alive eternally. The Bible promises life with God eternally, a new resurrection life. And the Bible uses the language of relationship and resurrection and relationship with God, not of a, a kind of a destination. It doesn't say there's this place called heaven that you're all going to live in. It, it, oh, Jesus talks about preparing a mansion for us, but... Generally, the Bible speaks not about a destination, but a relationship. The Bible gives a bigger vision of a new creation, heaven and earth united in the new created order of God's eternity, held in God's love. That's the vision of life beyond this life that we should have. Resurrection life and a new order based in the love of God. Eternity held in God's eternal love. It's what God calls here the resurrection. I don't know what you think of 
heaven, but it's not simply another lodging place. It's the eternity of the love of God. It's what Jesus here calls the resurrection. And his resurrection, the resurrection of Jesus, is the beginning, the origin, the starting point of what is to come for those who are saved through faith in him. So the resurrection and eternity is also bound up in Jesus. It is in Jesus. Because Jesus is the first fruits from the dead. But there's another thing in these verses about, as well as these interesting but difficult thoughts about life after this life, life after death. One, the other thing here is the grace that we see in the Lord Jesus. And that's something that we can learn for this life, for the here and now, for the messy business of dealing with other people. Jesus doesn't condemn the Sadducees for colluding with the Romans, which he might easily have done. He doesn't pick holes in their mistaken beliefs, which he could well have done. He treats these individuals with integrity and love, even though they're trying to catch him out. He meets them on their own terms. He draws an illustration from the scriptures, from the early books of the Old Testament, which we know the Sadducees loved and valued. He says, you know, when Moses met God in the burning bush, and he draws an illustration from that. And he guides these people into truth through things that they accepted and understood. And he acts so graciously to them. We have a lot to learn from the way Jesus gives a gentle answer to aggressive questioning. It's not surprising that this section ends with a, hmm, well said, Rabbi. From now on, there are no more questions. Instead, as Luke is telling us the story towards the end of his gospel, only the cross is in sight now, and the resurrection beyond. That's enough for me. What do you see in this story? I wonder if you've got any comments. Hi to those who are with us today. Good to see uh, a lot of our friends from church there and others as well. I think um, we've got people from all over the world with us today. Thank you for your company. I wonder how God is speaking to us through this passage. How, how is God telling you to listen and engage with him through these weeks leading up to Easter? Many of us are still rather isolated. Uh, those of us in this country are still in lockdown. How can we use this time to encounter Jesus, to meet Jesus in a new way? Let's see if there's any comments coming in. Thank you for being with us. Uh, thank you for your thoughts and your prayers. Let's pray briefly now before we finish. We're going to finish in a couple of minutes. I just want to pray for those who are with us today and for our world. Father God, we, we pray that you will help us to be gracious when people are aggressive with us or when people are sceptical about our faith or when people are simply trying to goad us, <laughs> or when things might upset us in our hearts and spirits. Lord, help us to be resilient, help us to be wise, but more than that, help us to be gracious and loving towards those that we speak to. Now, I'll change our hearts. Help us to be more like Jesus in the way we react to others, we pray. Lord, we thank you for the promise of resurrection life, of eternal life with you, that is bound by your love, which never fails. Lord, we depend on that living and loving and continuing relationship with you, Father God, through the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus, who is the first fruits from the dead. To help us, Lord, to stay close to, to him, to our Lord Jesus, day by day. And may these days leading up to 
uh, Holy Week to the uh, rem remembrance of our Lord Jesus' death on the cross and his glorious resurrection. May these days become for us days of learning and developing and growing in faith and in holiness and in devotion and in love. Lord, we pray for others who need you today. We pray for those who have special days, who have birthdays or special days today. We pray for those who are grieving. And with all the news about uh, women in danger on our streets, we pray, Lord, for safety, particularly for women and for vulnerable people. We pray, Lord, for your compassion and your strength to be with any who are feeling vulnerable at the moment. Lord, by your grace, be the strength of those who need you now and each day. Though, Lord God, may your blessing be on each one of us now and hear our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Can I remind you about our Trinity Baptist Church phone message, which is... Uh, our local phone call away if you're in Manchester on 0161 Exchange. That's 0161 509 4409, 509 4409, where you can uh, hear a local message, uh, a message from Trinity Baptist Church, well, from me, uh, where I give a little message and a, a prayer each week, and it changes every Friday. Do phone into that if, you're, if you want a, a word of encouragement and strength each week. Otherwise, uh, I'll be back here on Tuesday with another Meeting Jesus and we'll be here for church on Sunday at 10.45 here on Facebook Live. Or if you know how to get into our Zoom meeting, then come a bit earlier to our Zoom meeting. Be here at 10.45 here on Facebook Live on Sunday and then on Tuesday we're back here for another week. Uh, just two more weeks now of Meeting Jesus. Jesus and on Tuesday we're going to be really looking towards that Easter story as we see Peter telling Jesus no Lord I will not deny you spoilers he does anyway I'll be back on uh, Tuesday wrong caption Tuesday that's the one at two o'clock but for now from me Wayne Clark bye bye God bless bye now